Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Yesterday I recorded the tech talk for the week and there was a question about could I do a whole video on how I think playable carriers would actually work, so basically human controlled carriers. And well, this is the video. Uh, we've seen a lot of changes over the last little bit which are obviously brewing under the surface for War Thunder uh, trying to get different uh, stuff into the game, whether it's submarines, uh, whether it is carriers, or whether it is stuff like more guided missile destroyers for naval. And one of the interesting things that at least I've seen is a bunch of controls that are put in the back end to try and make this stuff work. If you think about, for example, the hydroplane controls for aircraft. So, I added in the hydroplane controls for aircraft on a dev server, completely randomly, and then they took it away again, and then they added the drones uh, in update Drone Age, which use basically those same hydroplane controls, and then obviously the hydroplanes for stuff like the cruisers and other vehicles came in, showing that there is a way that you can control two vehicles at the same time, and also quick switch between them, which is the biggest uh, thing, in my opinion, which is pretty impressive. There was also stuff put in the back end more recently when it came to controlling not carriers themselves, but squads based off of carriers. A bunch of AI squad controls, which all sounded like kind of blazing angels squadrons of World War II, where it was attack target, defend target, play passive, play aggressive, things like that, where it's just quick switch controls between different ideas where you tell certain formations of planes to be able to do stuff. So this would indicate that when it comes to carriers, what they're thinking of doing is putting AI planes on carriers and you launch them, you can direct control them if you want, or you can direct a leader of the formation if you want, and then on top of that, you uh, can tell kind of your squad around you to be able to attack targets <clears throat> or to be able to go after other things. And that sounds awesome. It really does. Uh, it sounds like something that you would have played once again in Blazing Angels or, you know, uh, good old uh, Midway uh, games or general uh, games which were from a top-down perspective like ages ago. It sounds really fun and it also means if they're able to improve these AI squad controls, that will actually benefit stuff like single missions, dynamic campaigns, and anything else that hopefully they're working on in the future. The problem with all of these systems is none of them, or the uh, aircraft carrier playstyle, fits the current game, which is something we've talked about with submarines as well. How submarines, the way that they were implemented, in uh, the test, there's no way they would work in the game. They're too short range, and also at the same time, how do you cap points? What do you do if there's, you know, a piece of land in the way? Do you have to spend the whole map going really slowly to try and get around the side of something and then launch the torpedoes when you're two kilometers away while under heavy fire? That's not really going to work very well, right? Uh, but I'm sure they'll do some changes and then kind of bring them in. Uh, but when you think about aircraft carriers, it's just a simple fact. The vast majority of the maps that you play on are too small. The only ones which aren't too small are the circular maps, uh, which, uh, you know, the open sea maps, which get a lot of criticism from players. Uh, but also at the same time, you will find them at the high echelon of naval, where you basically get a huge circle uh, one team spawns on one side, the other team spawns on the other, and you kind of have at it. One of the things you may have noticed on those maps is there are carriers which are just sat off the side of the map uh, on those. Now, imagine if uh, those carriers, which I think are like 35 kilometers away or something similar to that, imagine if they were actual player carriers and not necessarily just AI carriers that you land on. Now you've started to create some kind of game mode where a playable carrier can work because you have now uh, created something uh, which is a little bit more expansive compared to what it is before. On the standard naval map, which was created, you know, mainly for PT boats or coastal and then expanded to fit destroyers and sometimes cruisers, the carriers never are never going to work. But on those open sea maps, there is a chance that they could work. 
The only question is, how do you destroy a carrier? That is another question which, you know, will come up at some point. How do you actually deal uh, with destroying a carrier? Or do you just destroy the planes, basically leaving it up to its guns? And since most of them don't have a crazy armament, uh, what do you do with them then? Or maybe you have carrier on carrier violence where you go after each other uh, going from there. But if they decide to do like reloads of airplanes and they're just coming, they keep coming in and in and in, that could be kind of hectic at the end of the day. The ideas behind playable carriers seem pretty cool to me, but not in a PvP setting. When I look at World of Warships, uh, when I look at many other different things, the major stuff that I focus on uh, in regards to those games is. I see a mechanic which is either really fun to play and engaging or and also really awful to play against or a mechanic that is so janky that you don't like playing it and therefore if it is on your team it is seen as a curse. There seems to be no middle ground with these types of mechanics and I want to see how War Thunder actually implements them, because in the past they've implemented a ton of these mechanics which should be ones which are either really strong and annoying to play against or really weak and pretty much useless, and generally they have done a pretty good job, at least over a period of time. It might take years for certain mechanics to be in a better place, but at least they get there eventually. The only ones I can think of which right now are in that way too strong stage are stuff like laser guided bombs, but that's more about um, the pods uh, that the planes use and also the height they're able to get up to, and of course the significant nerfs uh, that they've done to high tier AAs recently, making them pretty much useless to play. So uh, there is a bunch of these mechanics in the game that they've added and eventually get balanced. For me, for playable aircraft carriers, I think they more actually fit in a PvE kind of enduring confrontation setup. One of the things we don't have in War Thunder is a PvE mode for naval. What if they added a PvE mode and it was kind of a big operation based on an enduring confrontation and you had different areas that you had to take out uh, or capture and uh, you have different you know aerial targets to go after the submarines can go in and go after targets which are stuck in ports or which are on the move such as supplies which are moving between different uh, zones if you haven't uh, captured them or not and to me that would make more of a sense basically set up kind of like a co-op game uh, where you are playing all of these vehicles together and I think that actually is what I would do. Uh, I wouldn't try and bother with this PvP idea of aircraft carriers because if they're strong and one team has them and the other team doesn't, well, you're going to have a bad time. But the way that the AA is right now on a lot of vehicles, I can't really see them being too strong. I can see them feeding a lot of score to the enemy uh, based on you know them not being too useful. But then if they are too strong and only one side has them, it's going to be very annoying. If both sides has them, then you have a situation that Enlisted has, where you have two players on each team out of 10 or 8 or whatever it is, which just dominates stuff because they use vehicles and nobody else does. And it just creates not a great scenario. Uh, so it's not nice having one or two people in a whole team being able to control the whole setup. But I honestly think in a PvE setting, that isn't too much of an issue because you can you have a bit more uh, expansion of what you can play. You can try a bunch of different stuff because you know that the AI will react in specific ways to specific things. So it gives you a chance of actually having a go at stuff. It is kind of weird we don't have a PvE naval mode, you know, with aircraft having one, with uh, stuff like helicopters having one, and even ground. Naval has just not had it. But then again, naval also doesn't have simulator mode, so not entirely sure what is going on with that. But it is at least something to think about. Thank you for the question, as always, and look after yourselves. Peace be with you, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Character Fuel, Juan the Panda, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, 
Barine, Peter, Grayling, Alan Hacker, Sam Alslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R., and also LaFouche for supporting the channel.